Bernoulli's theorem. The name of experiment is Bernoulli's theorem. The aim of this experiment is to verify the Bernoulli's equation experimentally. The Bernoulli's equation which we have already studied in our theory portion, that Bernoulli's equation we have to verify experimentally. The aim of this experiment is to verify the Bernoulli's equation experimentally. First of all, let's see what is the equation. See here. This is the Bernoulli's equation which we have already studied. That is Z1 plus P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g is equal to Z2 plus P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g. In this equation, the term, first term Z1, you can see here, is the potential heat. See. The Z1 term is the term for used for potential heat. And this second term P1 by rho g is used for pressure head. And the third term V1 square by 2g is velocity head. So this equation says that the summation of all the head or if I write this equation in terms of energy then I can say that Summation of all the energy at point 1 is equal to summation of all the energy or summation of all the head at point 2. So what the equation says that the sum of energy at any point is constant. That we have to prove experimentally. So Z1 is potential head, P1 by rho g is pressure head, V1 square by 2g is velocity head. Now let's see what is the concept of Bernoulli's equation, what is the theory. This Bernoulli's equation, above equation which we have seen is the energy equation basically. As I told you, it is the energy equation and is based on the law of conservation of energy. We know what is law of conservation of energy. This equation states that at two sections of fluid flow, the total energy remains same. Provided that there is no loss or gain of energy between the two sections. Again I am repeating. The equation says that at two sections of the flow field, the total energy remains same. Provided that there is no loss or gain of energy between the two sections. And this equation is valid only for steady flow. This is very important. This equation is valid only for steady flow. The kinetic energy of an object is the energy which it possesses due to its motion. Basically, in this equation, we are representing three forms of energy. Kinetic energy, pressure energy and potential energy. Let's see which, uh, what is these different types of energy. First is the kinetic energy and kinetic energy of an object is the energy which is possesses due to its motion when it is in moving. Potential energy, second is the potential energy and potential energy is the energy of an object or a system due to the position of the body or an object. Right? And the third is the pressure energy and pressure energy in the fluid may be considered to be measure of energy per unit volume. So these are the two, for, three form of energy which we are representing in the Bernoulli's equation. Now let's see. The construction of experimental setup. See, this is the setup of our experiment. You can see here, this is the water tank. This is present experimental setup of Bernoulli's theorem and it is self-contained recirculating tank. That means, see the arrow. This is self-contained recirculating tank. That means the water is transferred from this bottom tank. See here, this pipeline, bottom pipeline, green one. From this bottom tank, water is transferred through this pump to this overhead tank. From this overhead tank, through this pipe, the water is transferred through this flow meter and it is go to this tank. Right, so this is self-contained recirculating tank. 
right the setup contains the sump tank concentrate tank centrifugal form pump for lifting the water and measuring tank so this is the sump tank see here this bottom tank is the sump tank the top tank is the constant head tank this is centrifugal pump which is pump which is used to transfer the water from the sump tank to constant head tank and this is measuring tank from this tank we are going to measure the flow rate so that's why we call it as measuring tank right and the control valve and bypass valve is provided to regulate the flow of water in constant head tank we can control the flow of water in the constant head tank with the help of control valve and bypass valve a conduit of varying cross section is provided which is having converging and diverging section as i told you the flow meter or it is known as conduit of varying cross section the cross section of that conduit is varying first section is known as converging section and then another section is known as diverging section and the piezo meter tubes are fitted on this test section at regular interval on the upper portion of the setup if you have seen there is a number of tubes which are fitted on the test section that is known as piezo meter tubes the inlet of the conduit is conducted connected to the constant head tank at the outlet of the conduit a valve is provided to regulate the flow of water through the test section at inlet of the conduit the constant head is connected head tank is connected and the outlet of the conduit a valve is provided to regulate the flow of water after achieving steady flow discharge through the test section can be measured with the help of measuring tank and a stopwatch so once the steady state is achieved the discharge of the water or flow rate of the water we will calculate with the help of measuring tank and a stopwatch now let's see how the experiment we are going to perform what is the procedure to perform the experiment first step first we fill the tank 3 by 4 with clean water and ensure that no foreign particles are there that means the sump tank the below tank we first fill with water up to 3 by 4 level and we have to make sure that no foreign particles remain there because if there are solid particles are present then it will chock up the centrifugal pump right then our next step is to close the flow control valve given at the end of the test section first we will close the flow control valve then open the flow control valve and the bypass valve given on the water supply line to overhead tank so as we open the flow control valve now the water will transfer from bottom tank to the open Uh, to the constant head tank overhead tank now at this time ensure that all the on off switches given on the panel are in the off condition now switch on the main power supply and switch on the pump so as we have start the pump the water from the sump tank will go to the overhead tank and it transfer to the measuring tank now regulate the flow of water to the test section with the help of given valve at the end of the test section so with the help of this valve we can change the flow of the water to take the different different reading and at the end we have to measure the flow rate of water using measuring tank and the stopwatch so by following this procedure we are going to now perform the experiment So let's see how we can perform the experiment in this video. See, this is our experimental setup. See, this is the sump tank. This is overhead tank. Water transfer from this sump tank to overhead tank with the help of this centrifugal pump. Now, concentrate on this section. This is very important. This is our conduit having converging and diverging section and on this conduit there are seven piezometric tubes are there these are the piezometric tubes see now when we start the pump water transfer from the sump tank to overhead tank and through this valve see here this is important when it is transfer from this conduit the water height will be different in this piezometric tube 
and water which comes to this measuring tank we have to measure this height for a particular time of period so in this experiment we have to measure the height of the water in this tank for this particular time of period and we have to measure the height see we have to measure the height in this different piezometric tube so in the reading portion in the reading of the experiment we have to take the reading of the height of water in this seven piezometric tube and the height of water in this tank for a particular period of time so these are our reading which we have to take from this experiment right so let's see the observation these data are given to you area of measuring tank which is 0.1 meter square and the cross section area of seven different piezometric tube so these data are given to us area of measuring tank which is 0.1 meter square and this seven piezometric tube area right so these are given data now let's see let's see the reading which we have taken so in reading we have to take the reading of the height in the measuring tank and height of the different piezometric tube so see here this is our observation table or the reading which we have taken from the experiment this r is the height of the water in the measuring tank which we have measured from the scale which is fitted outside the tank in the first reading that is 5.5 5.6 cm and the time required to collect this 5.6 cm height is 30 second and the another reading are the height of the water in the seven piezometric tubes so these are the height of the water in the seven piezometric tube which we have measured experimentally and second reading is taken after changing the flow rate of water after changing the flow rate of water we have taken these readings right this after changing flow rate of water second reading is r is 11.5 cm for same 30 second time period and these are the height of the piezometric tube water level now let's see how we can prove the bernoulli equation to prove the bernoulli equation we have to calculate three types of head pressure head velocity head and potential head so let's see how we can calculate but for that first of all we have to calculate the volumetric flow rate so here volumetric flow rate q is a r by t a is the area of measuring tank r is our reading and t is time so here in the case 1 we have i have here mention the calculation for the first reading right so area of measuring tank is 0.1 r is 0.056 meter and time is 30 seconds so when you solve this you will get answer of volumetric flow rate as 1.866 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter cube per second now in the next step we have to calculate the velocity velocity is we all know that volumetric flow rate divided by area volumetric flow rate we have calculated 1.866 into 10 raised to minus 4 divided by area of first piezometric tube again i am repeating here this is very important area of first piezometric tube here we have to calculate the head at seven different points because here we want to prove the bernoulli equation so we have to calculate the head summation of head at seven different piezometric tube so i have mentioned here the date calculation of the first piezometric tube so velocity v is q by a so q we have calculated 1.866 into 10 raised to minus 4 divided by area of first piezometric tube which is 5.0074 into 10 raised to minus 4 so the velocity will be 0.3730 meter per second our next step is to calculate pressure head pressure head is h which is equal to p by rho g here 
we have the reading of h directly which is the height of water in the piezometric tube so in the first piezometric tube we have mentioned the height of water is 35.8 cm so pressure here for this first tube is 0.358 m next is velocity here which is v square by 2g we have already calculated v value so 0.3730 square divided by 2 into 9.81 the answer will be 0.0071 meter and the last is potential head but in this case as the flow is horizontal the value of potential head is zero so this is the calculation part for the first tube so we have already calculated three types of head pressure head velocity head and potential head now we have to calculate total head so total head is pressure head plus velocity head plus potential head so 0.358 plus 0.0071 plus 0 so the total head is 0.3651 meter so this is the value of total head for the tube 1 in the same way we have to calculate total head for tube 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 for both the reading so i have mentioned here in the table see this is the table of your final calculation for first reading this is only the table result table for reading number 1 see these are the tube number 1 to 7 velocity of point 1 height of point 1 tube velocity head potential head and total head see here we have calculated point 3651 that i have mentioned here point 3651 and in the same way you can calculate the different head and total head for tube number 2 3 4 5 and 6 so you can see here the total head value see total head value is nearly similar that means our bernoulli's equation is proved right the bernoulli's equation says that the total energy or the total head remains constant at any point so by this way we can prove that as the total head value for all the seven points are nearly same the bernoulli equation is proved now let's see what are the application of this equation basically bernoulli equation is applied to all the problems of incompressible fluid flow for all the incompressible fluid flow problem we can go for bernoulli equation Next is the Bernoulli equation can be applied to the following measuring devices such as venturi meter nozzle meter orifice meter pitot tube that means bernoulli equation is used in the application of flow meters and last is the bernoulli principle can be applied in an aeroplane the working of an aeroplane is basically based on bernoulli principle So these are the application of Bernoulli's principle. So what is the conclusion of our experiment? On the basis of the above results that we have mentioned in the table, on the basis of that results, it concludes that the sum of kinetic energy, potential energy, and pressure energy of fluid is same at any point in the tube. Right? That's the Bernoulli equation says. So we have proved the bernoulli's theorem or we have verified the bernoulli's theorem by this way experimentally fine so that's all about today's session so in today's session we have cover the experiment number 2 which is bernoulli's theorem i hope the session is clear to all thank you